Welcome back to another episode of the Real World Assets Show. Today we have Bill Lee from Dualmint. He's the CTO and co-founder. And Dualmint's driving the ownership economy. They're redefining how brands connect with their loyal fans and quite a few incentives and appreciations, how they can earn tangible rewards. And Bill, welcome to the show. I know we have a lot of things to talk about. You're working with several exciting brands, but uh, wanted to first just say, hey, welcome, and, and we'll get into it. Thanks, Travis. It is really great uh, to be here on your show. We met each other in, in Austin, and it was uh, pretty exciting to actually find people with the same type of passion, you know, real, real world assets. Now, even though it's such a narrative uh -huh. during this cycle, it's actually not very easy to find people echoing your, 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 your thoughts and your beliefs. Thank you, and the feelings mutual. And I, you know, I hear that a lot, and I, I say that a lot. It's, it's surprising. Like you said, it's, you know, you, you see these, these uh, charts and stats or things on Twitter, like, hey, you know, RWAs are second to meme coins in the sense of narratives and interest and the demand. But in the, in the real, like, you know, again, just the pun intended, the real world aspect of it and the real world adoption of it is still. A lot of us in the trenches and and really sorting through a lot of the noise. So I, you know, I, I agree. It was great to great to meet you at Consensus in Austin and uh, one of your partners as well. And you know, I, I I know we spent like about a day trying to kind of connect. And I was really thankful that we were able to to have a sit down meeting and, and chat more. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so thanks for coming. I I know you've shared quite a bit of things over some discussions we've had offline, but let's talk a little bit about. How, how you got into this well, you know uh, even before dual mint like what I know that you're the CTO you're coming at this from a from a technical aspect and also like an entrepreneur but I'd love to know more yeah um, you know as you can tell you know with all my gray hair I'm uh, <laughs> you know a gen X so I'm quite a bit you know older than the people who are doing this stuff right now I do have a technology background I study computer science and then I have a pretty much a full career in different you know, tech companies, large and small startups. Uh, I used to live in the U.S., so I've worked in many companies in Silicon Valley, or actually back in the East Coast in the field offices. So I, ha I have a tech background. Um, and then for a couple of years, I, I moved back to Hong Kong. I was transferred back by one of the tech company. Uh, at the time, it was an enterprise search company that eventually got bought out by Microsoft. And then I took a few years off from tech because and actually helped my family because my dad's health wasn't doing too well. Um, so I was, I was doing um, the, the bra business. Our family is in the bra business. So I'm, I went from one type of software to the uh, other kind of software. And now I'm back into, uh, you know, <laughs> the, 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 you know, the, the original type of software that, uh, that, that I'm doing. So, I mean, to, to, kind of this you know so at the time i had i had a, i was doing a startup in data privacy data privacy and i had a customer at the time which was a legal document framework solution company similar to what docusign is at the time yeah. so when they were kind of like having a beer you know uh, and chit, chit chatting and that was really during the first craze of the whole nft boom right so people were paying like you know, I don't know, $2 million for uh, a JPEG. So, you know, we're looking at each other. We're, you know, I'm, I'm a bit older. He's, he's not young either. Um, like, do you understand this, you know, NFT thing? You know, I mean, why, why are people like paying so much for these, like, you know, pixelated, you know, pictures? I have no idea, right? We, we look at each other. It's like, no, we don't, don't understand. But, you know, maybe we can use it for something else. Because, I mean, when we looked at the technology, it's actually kind of interesting. It's, it's great for, obviously, it's blockchain, you know, the whole distributed architecture and all that stuff. But it's really great for proving ownership and proving a scarcity, for example. So we thought, hey, you know, you have a tech uh, you have a legal legal document management framework. Why don't we see if we can leverage the legal side of things and, and sort of do something together? So that's kind of how it all got started. Like, at, you know, obviously many, many businesses start, start at a bar with, with a few drinks, right? Um, and, and the back of a napkin. So that was about a two, two uh, you know, a two and a half year, two years ago, two and a half years ago. And then we sat down and said, you know, hey, you know, if we if we look at the legal side of things, maybe we can sort of apply this thing, marry it together and work with like real world assets. That was actually what we're actually talking about. Like, how do we 
you know, tie that into actual real world assets. So originally, we saw very early on that the problem with NFT, well, it's great for digital assets, right? But if you want to translate that into the real world, the first thing that is a, is, is a limitation is that there's no fallback into the real world. Um, you know, like uh, if something hits a fan, you know, you have nothing to protect you in the in the real world. Like all that stuff is great. You know, it's on the blockchain. But what are you going to do if, you know, if somebody scams you or run away with your money, which actually it did happen from from the crash. Right. So we, we decided to sort of frame this thing, you know, how to how to how to how to uh, leverage the, the, the legal framework, document management framework to do this. That's why we sort of named the project Dual Mint. We kind of, you know, sat down and decided if we wanted to apply both provenance on the on-chain with the provenance off-chain, what is a good name? You know, Dual Mint. You know, you, you mint, but it's, you know, applying to both a real world as well as on-chain, right? Yeah. So we came up with Dual Mint and then we came up with this whole idea of the dual provenance, which is essentially the, the core of what we're trying to trying to build, right? So dual provenance is an idea where we can have two-way linkage between an online provenance with a real-world provenance. And the real-world provenance can be, you know, it could be simple like a GIS certificate because, you know, for, for a diamond, or it okay. could be as complex as, you know, any legal, um, you know, contracts that you work with, with the, with the underlying parties, right? So with the what we call ecosystem partner in place you know we have a way to basically import you know legal documents or what have you and have a workflow to include all the stakeholders that might be interested in shaping this real world provenance what it should look like and at the end we can basically digital sign it and then you know using it as a metadata on chain, taking the metadata, uh, taking the actual hash and putting it back into the actual provenance, right? So now you have have a two way linkage. So that was like sort of the first step. So, but we thought, hey, you know, but then, but then the problem is, if we're looking at a real world asset, it's not just about taking a picture of it and putting it on some glorified what we call distributed marketplace, right? Because that's not really to me, at least, it's not really supporting real world assets because there are a lot of different things that real world assets needs 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 touch points to be supported on, right? right? Like for example, yeah. like it might need, need logistics, it might need authentication, anti anti counterfeiting, you know, it may be even insurance, uh, appraisers, what have you, any anything, right? So, so the second thing we we looked at is how do we how do we address this so being a startup right obviously we have limited resources like you know don't want to spend too much of our own nest egg into this thing right so so we thought of hey instead of building it ourselves you know since we already have using this ecosystem framework we might as well recruit other ecosystem partners so we went out and looked for a few more partners right so we found we found a logistics partner. We found a uh, lifestyle and entertain uh, lifestyle and entertainment uh, investment partner, and we found a anti counterfeiting solution partner. That is actually a very interesting story in itself because it's a passport grade anti counterfeiting solution that is being used in many passports around the world. It's it's based on hologram uh, holographic. Well, I can't really do it justice because I mean I you know the the it's 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 a it's a passport grade holographic and the kind of fitting solution. So with that, we, we, we basically have the first ecosystem partnership that we can sort of, you know, really put in place and support a, a very amount of real world asset up there because we have logistics, we have anti kind of fitting, we have a legal, right? Obviously we're, we're continuing to want to, 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 um, to, uh, you know, recruit other ecosystem partners. So if any listeners out there who are, you know, have solutions and want to join our ecosystem, feel free to contact us. And we're, we're very happy to, to speak to you guys. So that's essentially a very quick, you know, few minutes overview of how we sort of got started here in the, in the RWA space. I love that. I mean, I, I think, well, first off, I, I just to, to the end of what you mentioned, I mean, partnerships in RWA is is critical i mean and and i believe that in any business i mean and just 
It's not my first rodeo either. So businesses I've been involved with, uh, it's been very clear that partnerships, uh, tight relationships uh, are key. But also in RWA, as you know, this is one of the, this is a very unique time and a very unique place. And I think to, to our point at the beginning about how it's nice to find people that are passionate about this and are, are building, it's also one of the most giving and most, you know, just non-competitive type of spaces, because even if people are building similar things or they're involved in some similar things, or there's some overlap, everyone seems to have a very giving first type mentality, yeah. which is great. So I, I love yeah. that. And, and I will say, you know, and I think that that was a perfect origin story of, of understanding where you were, you know, where you're going, how you, you know, uh, we'll get into what, what accomplishments you've had and even some of the pivots. And I, and that's what one of the nice things is you're building is you kind of learn these things as we're early in this, this adoption phase. And, you know, there's, there's pivots that will happen. Um, but I will say just one funny aside, you went from the bra business to the back of a napkin to, to blockchain. Everybody finds, yeah. to Everybody blockchain. finds that for really cool. yeah, yeah. I, I love that. And also like, I have to at least call out that, you know, there's two holes in a bra. So dual, like it's a yeah. dual mint. So, you know, I guess, yeah. I don't know, like <laughs> you might still be able to bring that into an RWA ownership profile and yeah, rewards exactly. at some point. So who knows, exactly. but you know, you never exactly. know how these, these uh, backgrounds we have turn into other things, but anyway, I, I'm digressing, but I, you know, I like to, to, <laughs> to call that out, but let's talk a little bit about like some of the projects. And we've talked quite a bit about, some of the brands that you're working with, some of the projects. I know some you're not able to kind of get into full details about, but let's really talk about some of the specific things you're doing at Dual Mint now. I know, you, you know, with the technology, you're calling these real world asset tokens and yeah. you have several brands and, and stages you're working with them, but I'll, I'll kind of give the floor to you to, to which direction you want to go first with that. But I, I know that I'm super excited about all the brands that you've, you've talked to me about. Yeah, I I think you know I, I will maybe touch base on a little bit of the on the pivot side uh, that you mentioned. You know, originally we started and we we wanted to focus on just collectibles, right? Um, so you know, like art, like you know, like a, maybe a bottle of whiskey, um, you know, rare whiskey, maybe rare watches, you know, things like that, antiques, and something that is very easy to understand. Now we 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 started doing that, and that's kind of interesting. But then we also started brainstorming. Obviously, you know, we wanted to expand the horizon, like because with the framework, we can basically apply with a lot of stuff. So we see ourselves not like a product specific uh, platform. We want our, our we aspire to be sort of the the blueprint for people to actually bring on board web, you know, real world assets onto onto Web three, right? Yeah. So. So we want to not only work with the physical collectibles. So what we what now we're seeing ourselves as as a real world asset tokenization platform that supports both tangible and intangible products. So tangible product is easy to understand. It's kind of like you know the stuff I just kind of mentioned. Intangible could be like things like IP rights. It could be like future earnings. It could be, you know, project financing. And then it becomes very, it becomes a lot more interesting because you can actually structure many different things very differently because it's not just a piece of product that you, you put on top, right? It could be like a membership. It could be, you know, a lot of, a lot of different things. So we find that it's becoming, you know, more of what we are as, as, as a project focusing on and you mentioned actually a bunch of so so we have like actually now dabbling into like many different areas we are, we are doing a lot of projects in the esg related areas so you know we're working with different local governments around the world so obviously smaller countries um with which we have you know connections to to do things like so you know tokenizing solar panels tokenizing one interesting project is actually on our site it's called eco wash where a company is trying to is that not trying to they're actually doing it they're replacing all the energy inefficient washing machines around universities you know when you know when you go to school you have to wash your you have to wash your clothes and then you know usually you know you have to put in quarters or in the US um, and then you, you do a 45 minute wash and, and 45 minute drying. But a lot of these machines are outdated. They're not energy efficient. So this company is going around and, and replacing these and then they want to tokenize them so that, you know, they can, the token holders actually earn 
a good portion of the return that is generated by these washing machines. So it has, so the washing machine is obviously energy efficient. It actually has a self dispenser for the detergent. So you don't, you know, the students don't need to carry around these plastic bottles and throw it away. So it's, it's very like eco-friendly. So we have a, a bunch, we're working with like, so this is a very interesting project. You know, it's, it's, it's tw guaranteed 25% yield, um, a year. Um, and you know, you're doing something good. It, we want to kind of work on projects that has, that has a lot of like interesting stories behind it, plus, you know, you generating, so you, you're kind of like buying into this or into this community, not buying, but you're, 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 you're part of a community where you want to, you know, contribute to, you know, green energy or whatever it is, like something meaningful, but you also get some return on the things that you're working on. There are actually a bunch of other projects that are, you know, very different and interesting. So the, this is kind of like, I gave you some examples on ESG related projects. We also are working with an immersive opportunity in the Southeast, one of the South where we will be bringing in a immersive experience for the whole country with this artist called Gustav Klimp. And we are putting out a product called Advertise and Earn where, you know, we can, the advertisers essentially uh, earn a, a return for advertising plus free tickets for for the duration of the uh, of the show. So it's kind of like project financing uh, type structure um, that we're doing. Another one that is really interesting, uh, you know, US bound is we're working with a Napa Valley um, uh, cult wine that is that has already like, you know, it just it's a very young brand that I think just form I think the 10, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. And it's now has already won a lot of awards. They are selected to be one of the eight pours in, in Davos uh, next January. So, you know, it, it's very high profile. Elon Musk is doing something with them uh, as well. So we're using our, they're using our technology, the end accounting fitting technology, plus our blockchain to solve a whole bunch of, you know, address a whole bunch of things in, 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 I can't really be going into too much details because it's hasn't, hasn't been released, but it's going to be very exciting once it does. And this solution is going to, he, I think the, they will be presenting this in Davos, um, to, you know, a lot of the, 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 the leaders over there. So, you know, that's just, just a, you know, just a very high level overview of some of the projects that we're involved with, because with our framework, we're actually in attracting a lot of these interesting projects, um, around yeah. plus, you know, you know, yeah. the, 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 the founders actually have pretty, pretty good, like network of, uh, of businesses. So that's how we can also source some of these interesting projects as well. Yeah. And I think to your point, the type of people that you're going to attract to typically are a forward thinking open to do, you know, like you're right. not going to always attract a winery. Although I've seen really, really strong blockchain use with just more of the transparency of wine production, for example, like the QR code type of idea on blockchains. Yep. But yep. Yep. you'll find, you know, you won't find, you know, maybe wineries have been around for a hundred years as interested always in immediately going to blockchain. You might, but I mean, it's nice to, you know, cult like newer brands that um, are open to this and adopting early is, is great. I mean, cause it, it aligns really well with your ethos as well. And, you know, I think to your point, it's the, where this is going is just the ownership economy as, as you guys label so well mm -hmm. on the, on the beginning of the site on uh, the, this really is the future. It's, you know, in web two, we had points and reward systems and apps that, you know, like you get a few points here and there. And, you know, it's argued that 90% of people don't take advantage of their rewards, but yeah. I'm completely on board with web three is a complete game changer when it comes to incentives, aligned incentives, yeah. whether it's tokens, whether it's, you know, ownership, uh, whether it's specific rewards, they're significantly more uh, aligned because as you mentioned, not only the way you're aligning with projects based on your ethos and based on, you know, exciting opportunities and, and kind of like the public good aspect of some of these mm -hmm. is that that's how investors, you know, the average investor in the future, not, you know, not uh, a credit investor type of idea necessarily, but regular investors that are looking to align with their 
you know, with what they want, they, they want to see in the world, you know, do they want an energy efficient world? They want a more green, you know, sustainability might be their biggest area that they want to focus on. Yep. So yeah, I, yep. I like how you're tying these together and the fact that they're being asset agnostic. And I, I've talked to a lot of projects this way. And I think you're building the tech, you're figuring out how the tech, you're making the tech work, you're mm -hmm. meeting projects where they are in, in their web two world. And you're, you're providing that bridge, you know, you're providing that, you know, API connection, yeah. so to speak. I actually, I think this is very important. I think, you know, the first wave of RWA is obviously being led by all the financial assets, right? You know, which is pretty natural because the, the dollar value is a lot higher. The transactions are a lot more, but collectively speaking, actual real world asset obviously is a much bigger market, but you know, it's great that, you know, people like black companies like BlackRock is actually leading the charge and putting this whole concept of RWA into markets, right? But then like, you know, I, I, I really strongly believe in order to sort of, in order for Web3 to become like mainstream, you know, actual real world asset, like the stuff that we're working on has to eventually participate because a lot of times right now it's still, you know, the, the, I guess the, the complaint is still a zero sum game, right? Because basically it's all, you know, crypto money going from left pocket to the right pocket, right? We, in order to sort of attract new capital into the ecosystem, you really need to start, you know, having business use case that applies to the rest of, you know, the rest of the, you know, the, the, the industry, like all the other things. And, and we're trying to do our part in bringing on like interesting projects with interesting, you know, uh, yeah, it's all it's all story. It's all about the storyline. You know, I mean, uh, just like this conversation we have on the podcast. I mean, it's it's really about having these stories. What you know, and um, presenting that. You know, getting the word out. And a lot of it, it's way more interesting if there's a great backstory and a, and a great application. Yeah. And to your point, I think the unlock. You know, there's a lot of it. We're in the education phase. We're early, and projects are figuring it out you know, uh, retail, so to speak, uh, you know, I use that term with air quotes, but you know, they're learning and, and they're getting educated, but I think where the unlock still lies, I mean, we see stable coins are the, are the original yeah. RWA token yeah. as yeah. more and more people realize that stable coins are a significantly better place to put their money. You know, obviously there's people that are already putting most of their money into treasury bills and things, as you mentioned, you know, just very stable returns, getting that 5% from, from something that's yeah. guaranteed. But if you're looking at just kind of beating inflation, so to speak, <clears throat> settling in stables, yeah. getting a certain percentage of the population into stables, I think is the, you know, there's, there's multiple things that are going to unlock this, but I think that's one of the biggest unlocks because it becomes less of a zero sum game because you don't feel like you're trading from the left to right pocket and you don't feel yeah. like it's uh, speculative crypto because you're in stables. You might be, you know, in, in the U S it's arguable right now, like a, the dollar might be worth, you know, 89 cents, not a dollar. So, you know, if you're settling in stables or getting paid, paid in stables to begin with, you know, you're, you're theoretically starting off in a much better spot. I think that's where you can apply that yeah. you know, to projects like Dual Mint, where you want to take those yeah. stables and you want them working for you and getting yeah, a yield. Exactly. Like instead of, instead of doing like, you know, yield farming and, you know, with impermanent loss and all that stuff, you know, we, you know, DeFi 1.0 brought a lot of really in interesting ideas, but I think, you know, with, with real world asset backed type projects, um, and with the actual real world provenance associated with it, which is, you know, the, the, the very important thing you have a lot, I, I believe, you know, there's a, a higher level of trust in these type of projects than you know, just something that is kind of like completely. It is. Yeah, it's, the, the, you're right. I mean, it's, it's yeah. very important to emphasize your focus on the dual provenance, you know, and I think that's yeah. that because, you know, having a token to say that this is wine, as you know, um, we've seen it yeah. not work plenty of times before, yeah. you know, so if you yeah. don't have that yeah. dual provenance and you don't have the technology figured out and that, you know, uh, that tie to the real world asset, uh, which requires work, which is why you guys have been, you know, busy doing that and, and figuring yeah. it out. And I, I do like that you've 
because as you mentioned, you're asset agnostic, but I think you've, you've found a little bit of your stride in this, in these unique projects that mm -hmm. also align with typically a very passionate audience, you know, whether that be sustainable, whether that be yeah. the, the wine side of things, I mean, very specific things where there's a cult like following that mm -hmm. sustainability is massive, you know, um, wine following is also massive. So it, there's really quite a few things that as you mentioned, have just immediate attraction to to the real world already, which I think gets lost sometimes because some people just get too excited about the technology and the opportunity and the revolution of the new fi financial markets. And they forget like yeah. just psychology 101 that, you know, like people are gonna be attracted to things that they actually <laughs> already do and already love. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at some posts, you know, in Twitter and this, this guy's have listed like, you know, the ten, you know the the most bar, boring business is what brings you the most ca you know the cash flow and some of these things like you know washing machines some of these you know like like really boring things right basically the, you know it's cash business you know you just get the cash flow in this is kind of like you know what we're kind of trying to do but with a ESG related angle or what have you finding these type of you know boring assets that bring you like yield right like so and make it available like you know across different jurisdictions. I, you know, I'm, you, you need to package that. Cause I, I totally agree with that. I, I follow a lot of those same things. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, I mean, it's just in my DNA. Like I, I typically take very complex things and that's why I like having these podcasts and like kind of try to distill them down as a simple form. I, I think I have a pretty good knack for that. Yeah. And yeah. generally speaking, like that's why I've been in sales and different things. Cause it's just, it's easy to, you know, when you're talking to people, you don't want to be talking at you know, uh, at a technical level or at a, at a level where it doesn't yeah. make sense. So I think that's where, even with this, I mean, boring businesses and revolutionizing yeah. that with tech is, it's such a great model. It really is. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So kudos. Totally I, I like that. I, I've, I've always loved, you know, even like going back to what you were talking about, just reframing the idea of NFT technology is amazing and it keeps advancing, but yes, framing that's a, that's a peeve of mine, right? Like, yeah, it's such a, Add connotation like I decided so I send you the blog that I, I blog post that I write so I'm deciding basically we're just gonna drop the whole NFT thing first of all it, it's not really any NFT anymore right because NFT really is designed for digital only assets only right, right. so yep. when you start look at marrying it to like real world assets like the stuff that we're talking about like you know like the real world provenance like you know and that kind of fitting solution, like, you know, logistics, or whatever, like, you know, you're building into this whole protocol. It's no longer NFT. So we have decided to call it real world asset token, right? I mean, it's so like obvious. I don't know why, you know, not more people are, you know, using this for real world asset, right? Just, you know, just get rid of the whole NFT stigma and, you know, just move on. I brought this up on a Twitter space. I, I retweeted and, and I think I shared it on LinkedIn too, about uh, the same thing. And I, I, I'm screaming it from the mountaintops as well because I think it, it's a brilliant positioning. And as you mentioned, it's it's it is really the just the evolution of technology. I mean, you're not just rebranding something because it's cute. You're rebranding it because it it obviously makes sense, and the technology has moved. And yeah. um, we you know you don't want to be stuck with this, this stigma. And again, this is early, so these are the kind of things. I mean, four years ago they were calling RWA's security tokens, mm -hmm. as you know, and that's right move to RWA, it seems like that's going to stick. I mean, we, we never know, but I think overall, I mean, I, I certainly commend you and the team for, you know, continually being innovative, being out there, uh, you know, you're at conferences, you're in the trenches, you're, you're constantly pivoting and, and finding what's working and, you know, you're, you're finding unique brands as you describe some of them. I mean, I know you have uh, a, a bit more coming up and, you know, I'm excited to kind of continue sharing that and continue talking with you about it. But Dulman is, you know, definitely moving in the right direction for web three, I, th I think, w w and it's aligning incentives. I mean, and, and I love how you guys are doing that with aligning the incentives, aligning yield, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a perfect marriage and, um, anything else, you know, you want to chat about as we're wrapping up, I know we're riffing here on different topics, but I think, you know, we covered quite a bit and really exciting. No, I think I think that's a good start. I would love to come back on a show, you know, maybe later and discuss more in detail on some of these projects when I can share more, you know, um, and or just yeah, then we we definitely need to report back because uh, you know deal, your deal flow and your your new brands are coming through regularly, and 
uh, as as we continue to do that. I know that that's this is a, a popular segment because again, this this really ties into what you know whether it's boring businesses or it's where there's a cult like following. These are the kind of brands that people want to hear about and they want to get involved with. I mean, uh, this is a way that drives you know growth for them and in, in, in investing and also for dual mint. So it's been a great conversation, yeah. Bill. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely have you back. And I will put everything in the show notes, but dualmint.com is a website. And uh, Bill, uh, CTO and co-founder, uh, amazing team. Love what you're doing. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Hey, thanks, Travis. Uh, we're happy.